Hi, I'm Dr. Yen Reyes. I'm an infectious disease specialist and a pediatrician. I will be talking about medical updates, lifestyle, and health. So please subscribe to my channel and click the notification button. So, marami na rin Filipinos na vaccinated na with COVID vaccine pero marami pa rin nagtitext sa akin or nagtatanong kung ano ba yung protocols nila kasi yung iba nalilito. So, I made this for you. So, the title is, Fully Vaccinated ka na ng COVID vaccine. May ibang protocol para sa'yo. I primarily made this for our hospitals in Cavite, but these protocols are based on the Interagency Task Force or IATF, and I've researched this with the um, Department of Health and WHO protocols. So this is applicable for all Filipinos. So first, we have to define kung ano yung fully vaccinated individuals. So number one. More than, e more than or equal to two weeks after having received the second dose in a two-dose series. Like for example, kung yung vaccine mo ay Sinovac or AstraZeneca, kailangan niya ng two dose. So after two weeks niyan, fully vaccinated ka na. Or fully vaccinated ka rin if more than or equal to two weeks after having received a single dose vaccine. Kasi may mga vaccines na like for example, Johnson & Johnson, single dose lang siya. So after two weeks from that, fully vaccinated ng category mo. So the vaccines administered to the individual are included in any of the following. So sila yung may emergency use authorization, may EUA. So yung, anyway, lahat naman ang binibigay ng, sa government natin is approved ng EUA or List of Compassionate, Compassionate Special Permit or CSP issued by the Philippine Food and Drug Administration or Emergency Listing of the WHO or World Health Organization. So, ano yung intrazonal movement? I-define mo, i mo na natin to. So, it is movement of people, goods, and services or between localities under the same community quarantine classification. So, like for example, Cavite and Laguna, pareho silang ECQ. So, the same ang kanilang community quarantine classification without transiting through an area placed under a different classification. So, intrazonal movement yon. So, ano yung protocol pag intrazonal movement? So, the intrazonal movement of fully vaccinated individuals or senior citizens within areas under GCQ is allowed and shall present the following as proof of their vaccination status. Number one, dapat dala-dala mo yung COVID vaccination card. So, as much as possible, as mentioned, wag mo mo nang ilaminate. Pwede mo siyang ilagay sa cellophane kasi in time, pwede pa kasi siyang uh, lalagyan siya ng booster dose. So, ilalagay mo siya ng mabuti sa uh, properly sealed na cellophane or whatever a folder you can place na fully protected siya. Kasi dapat dalhin mo yung vaccination card. Or, pwede ka na magdala ng certificate of quarantine completion showing the holder's vaccination status as may be issued by the Bureau of Quarantine. Sa so, Bureau of Quarantine kasi nagbibigay din siya ng quarantine completion. Pero please, observe to a minimum public health standards to continue. So like for example, dala ka pa rin face mask, face shield required pa rin sa Philippines. And then proper hand washing at saka one meter distance pa rin. So define na naman natin yung interzonal movement. So it is movement of people, goods, and services across areas placed under different community quarantine qualifications. Like for example, itong area na to under ECQ, yung ibang area like GCQ, so interzonal movement lang siya. Like for example, if iba yung community quarantine classification ng Manila or Baguio, interzonal movement yung gagawin mo kung pupunta ka doon sa, sa Baguio from Manila. So, ano naman yung gagawin mo sa kung kahit fully vaccinated ka? So, ito yung guidelines. Dapat dalin mo yung vaccination card pa rin. Duly issued by the legitimate vaccinating establishment, dalhin mo yung vaccine card. And then the certificate of quarantine, that is completion showing the holder's vaccination status as may be issued by the Bureau of Quarantine. So, actually, allowed na ang mga senior citizen. So, travelers, including senior citizens, shall undergo health and exposure screening upon arrival in the local government unit of destination. So, most of the time, meron silang health declaration pagdating mo doon. So, may checklist pa rin yung health declaration nila. 
Tapos, i-check ka pa rin kung may cough, colds, fever, at saka yung i-follow mo pa rin yung protocol nila sa health declaration. Tapos, uh, besides that, you still have to continue your the protocol, which is face mask, face shield, and, and proper hand washing. So, in case a fully vaccinated individual are close contacts of a probable or confirmed case, they may. So, like, for example, fully vaccinated ka na, tapos na-expose ka sa person na may COVID na confirmed case. So, ito yung dapat mong gawin. You may undergo a shortened seven-day quarantine only if the individual remains asymptomatic during the quarantine period. So, day one after the date of exposure. Like, for example, April, April 1 can expose. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, day 8 yung computation mo na magka-quarantine ka. So, in case magkaka-symptoms ka. So, ito lang ay para sa asymptomatic. Pero in case magkaka-symptoms ka, mag-RT-PCR ka, we may, which may be done not earlier than 5th day. So, mas maganda 5th day onwards magawa yung RT-PCR mo after the date of the last exposure. Kung anong date ka na-expose. So for positive result or he or she becomes symptomatic, he or she may follow the prescribed testing and isolation procedures. So pag positive, the same na yung protocol sa iyo. Ikakategorize ka na kung mild, moderate, severe, at saka the same na yung protocol sa iyo. So no testing and quarantine shall be required for those close contacts who have been monitored and remained asymptomatic beyond the seventh day from exposure. So, yan ang ngayon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you can also give comments and suggestions for the, for the next video. Stay safe, everyone.